Poke fans, we're here to talk about episode 54 of Pokemon Horizons. So let me just... Okay, the episode wasn't bad. I'm not, I'm gonna say that right now. I love the interactions with On and the gang. Um, the freak stuff felt a little tacked on, I will admit. But I did like the ending. Okay, I like what happened at the end of the episode. Uh, it's good foreshadowing for the rest of the series. Um, but here's here's my key takeaways from this episode. I feel more confident in Freed now not being a bad guy. He goes into the, like his old workplace where the Rakurium, whatever the fuck the, the thing is called, exists or was created or is being investigated, analyzed, studied, all that stuff, okay? And Spinel was out there being sus as fuck, like always. I've always said Spinel's actually like, Spinel is like the villain that I'm most intrigued with out of every one of the explorers. So I'm glad that they're like they're not just throwing him to the wayside, right? Like, we have Sango and and Onyx, you know, chilling with with the kids, right? So I'm glad that the other explorers aren't like hiding away or they don't exist anymore. So I'm I'm, I'm glad that he's still a thing and he he's using his his intellectual capabilities to sneak in to his fucking building and stealing this crucial item, whatever the fuck this thing is. We don't know what it is yet. Um, so I'm glad that they're, 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 they're and, and they're really pushing the, I, I like, listen, the ending where they revealed that Gideon is Amethio's grandfather was like, it gave me flashbacks to, to other, um, shows that I've watched in the past. Um, and, and I kept, I keep saying, I've been reiterating this in the past, uh, well, actually during season two, uh, mainly that I'm really expecting an Amethio turn later down the line. And this kind of solidifies it for me, okay? Now, this might just be me being, like, going against the because I don't think anybody else that I've noticed has talked about this before. But they're really building Amethio to be, like, this, this force against, you know, our group. But every time something happens and he has an interaction with somebody else from the Explorers, it's like, he doesn't get along with anybody. Right, and they had him throwing a line about, "Oh, I'm not like my father," but I think that's where it's gonna lead to. Like whatever his dad did, which we don't know, obviously, because this is the first time we've been mentioning this shit. Right, I'm I'm pretty sure his father did went against, you know, Gideon's plan or something along those lines. Right, so I'm expecting there to be a correlation where Amanda is gonna learn some. All this sounds sus as fuck to me, and and he's gonna turn. I. And, and the, the fact that Hamburg was like, oh, I'm proud of you. No, I'm still, in my mind, they're, they're seriously pushing. I meant going to turn on the explorers. He's going to join the good guys, right? And he's going to fight against his grandfather. This is like a pinnacle of like storytelling that I've seen in the past. Like, I think when, <laughs> okay, this might just be me being weird. But, and it might also be like a recency bias. But it's giving me like Zuko vibes from like the Avatar Last Airbender series, right? Where Zuko was like an asshole in the first season against the gang. And then he like starts turning into a good guy. And then like by the third season, he's now like, oh, helping the Avatar take down my father. So like that's like the vibes I, I was getting. And like I said, maybe it's just recency vibes because of all the Avatar news and people talking about the fucking live action, which is a piece of shit, which I'm never going to watch. But <laughs> so I'm like, I'm, I'm getting those vibes. I don't know about you guys. You know, leave it in the comments. Let me know. But I, I'm getting the sense that... This is really pushing Amethio to be like, I don't, I like, I want to make my grandfather proud, right? I, I'm, I'm here for him, but something's going to happen down the line that's going to make him question everything that's happening, and he's going to be like, maybe this isn't the right way to do it, and he's going to turn on Gideon, and then like, he's going to, he's going to help the Volcateers, and he's going to help Liko uh, to take goes to Rakua and, and go from there. Like, I, I'm really getting those vibes. Okay, I've been saying this since, like, beginning of Season 2, uh, ending of Season 1 type of stuff. Like, I've been I've been saying this for a while, and I'm going to keep stating this because it really feels like that's what's heading um, our way. Um, aside from that, like I said, free, the free stuff felt a little off. Like, I get it. They, I... I don't know. Like it just, it just felt like tacked on in this particular episode. Personally speaking, like I, I, I understand that they're trying to expand on the lore of the whole like Terrapago stuff. Right, I get that, um, but it just like it felt a little off because they had the Lico on Broy stuff at the beginning, and then like this small like 
free section where nothing got accomplished, right? It's not like he learned anything new. Um, and then it went to the Ametio stuff with Gideon, and then the kids arriving at Orange Academy. So it's like, well, Naranja Academy. We gotta call it the right word, okay? The right name, Naranja Academy. Um, so it just, like, it just felt like it was tacked on in there for no reason other than, like, the only payoff to that scene and that whole section is the fact that we know Ametio is after. And this is why I say I feel like Ametio is gonna turn, because he doesn't even trust his compatriots, right? He doesn't really care for anybody else in the Explorers, and it might just be his, like, ego because, like, oh, I'm the grandson of our leader, right? I just personally don't think he trusts anybody, right? And and that's what's gonna lead to his eventual turn. Like, you know, I don't like these people, and 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 I'm, I don't even know if what I'm doing is right anymore, and then he's gonna turn, okay? I'm sorry I've been rattling a lot about the whole Metro turning, but this is, like, the, the focal point of this entire episode. Like I said, the on stuff was fine, I actually like Ahn as a character. I, I, I was hoping for more of her interactions with Liko because like, they set her up to be like the best friend at the beginning of the series, and then she hasn't really had too much of a focal point. Um, so I'm glad that she's there, and she's still like this rival character for Liko, which is gonna help her improve in the future. So the only noteworthy thing about Ahn in this episode in particular, or her and her plotline, is the fact that she does mention the Pokemon League. Because looking at her three characters, Liko Dot don't really feel like the, the type of characters that would go for the Pokemon League aspect of things. And I don't know if Roy's gonna go that path either, right? So I don't know why they decided to throw that jab in there, especially because we've already faced three gym leaders. And that wasn't like a gym battle scenario, right? It was just like the trust, of course, right? So I don't know what this is hinting at in the future, um, but I am gonna be looking out for it. Next week, or technically speaking this weekend, which by the way, apologies for the late review. This weekend was not, it was not it for me. I had a lot of stuff going on. Um, and uh, I wasn't able to get this, this, I literally just watched the episode right now. So, sorry about that. Sorry for the late review. Um, but, I, I'm not looking forward to next week's episode. Because I, I feel like they're going to do one of those like rushed, multiple like stuff happening in one episode. Which I really despise. And I, I'm personally not looking forward to it. I know they're gonna they're, they're gonna battle the Elite Four people, right? I get that, but like I don't know. I don't I don't feel like it's gonna be good. I don't think they're gonna handle it properly. But we'll have to wait and see when it, and it comes out um, whether they handle it properly or not, right? Like from what the preview showed, um, Iono and Dot are gonna be facing against Poppy, and then like Roy and Bracius are facing against Hamel. Um, or Hans, 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 Hazel, 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 I forget what the fuck his name is. The dragon elite for person. His Bexcalibur over here using his thermal exchange to take the fire from fucking, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to be a good episode. So I'm not personally looking forward to it, but I, I'm willing to be surprised. Okay. Uh, but that's going to be it for this review. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it off there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed I have been your host, Ernest Croxton, and I will see you guys in future videos, shorts, streams, and everything in between.